Hello everyone, this is Ms. Lindsay. Today we're going to talk about section 7.3, formulas involving polygons. First of all, we are going to talk about polygons and the different names of these polygons. You can see from this table below that we have the number of sides on the left hand side and the name of the polygon on the right hand side. This is also in your textbook on page 307. So you can either write them down from there or please go ahead and pause and write these down. Some of these we have already talked about, obviously three sides with a triangle, four sides is a quadrilateral. We can get more specific with that, um, but in general, four sides is a quadrilateral. And if we do not know the number of sides, then we call that an n-gon. For example, if it has 20 sides, it would be a 20-gon. So please pause and make sure you get these written down. Next, we have three theorems that we're going to talk about in this section. Uh, first of all is the sum of the interior angles, which we designate as S sub I. And this formula is S sub I is equivalent to the quantity of N minus 2 times 180. For all of our formulas, N is equivalent to the number of sides of the polygon. Now this N minus 2, we discussed this a little bit last chapter. Where does that actually come from? When we reviewed uh, quadrilaterals, we formed two triangles within the quadrilateral. And this is exactly what that N minus 2 is. It's the number of triangles that can be formed within a polygon. And therefore, um, each triangle, the angles add up to 180. So we take that times 180. The next theorem is the exterior angle, um, which is taken one at each vertex, the sum S sub E, that's supposed to be S sub E right there, um, of each polygon is 360. We will explore this a little bit more in class as to where this um, formula is actually coming from. And the third one is the number of diagonals that can be drawn in a polygon of N sides. So we have N times the quantity of n minus 3 divided by 2 and again n refers to the number of diagonals of each vertex and we'll discuss this a little bit um, later in the video. Moving on to our first example we're trying to find the measure of angle G. First of all on this example the vertices are missing so go ahead and put the vertices on there G F I H and it's a four-sided figure, so we have a quadrilateral from the last unit. We know that those angles add up to, uh, I'm sorry, 360 degrees. So if we add x plus 2x plus 7x plus 8x, we get that equivalent to 18x. Therefore, x is 20, and the measure of angle G would therefore be 160 degrees. Our second example, using a dodecagon, so referring back to our table from the previous, um, the very first slide, we know that that has 12 sides. We want to find the sum of the measure of the angles. Now, if this is written in this form in the textbook, it's assumed to be interior angles, unless otherwise specified. So interior angles. So we would be using the formula S sub I is equivalent to the quantity N minus 2 times 180. So in other words, the number of triangles we can form times 180, therefore we'd have 12 minus 2 times 180, which is equivalent to 1,800 degrees. So the sum of the measure of the interior angles of a dodecagon would be 1,800 degrees. Still using a dodecagon for part B and C, so N equals again 12 sides for these. Now we're trying to find the sum of the measures of the exterior angles, and this simply would be 360 degrees. C, find the number of diagonals. Now we're referring to our formula, which is n times quantity n minus 3 divided by 2. And we have our number of sides again is 12, so we'll plug that into our formula. And that would be equivalent to 54 total diagonals in a dodecagon. 
Moving on to our next example. Here we have a quadrilateral. We're trying to find the measure of angle one. We're given that angle B and angle D are congruent. Therefore, we go ahead and label that angle D is 100 degrees. We do not know that this is a parallelogram, knowing only one set of opposite sides, I'm sorry, opposite angles are congruent. Therefore, we just have to use the fact that the angles add up to 360 degrees. So if we subtract um, 100 and another 175 from 360, that gives us um, angle DCB is 85. Therefore, we know that these are supplementary. So angle one would be equivalent to 95 degrees. Next, we have what is the name of the polygon if the sum of the measures of its angles is 1080? And again, it does not specify, therefore we do assume that they're referring to the interior angles. And we're looking for the name of the polygon, not the number of sides, the name. Therefore, since we're finding the interior angles, we will be using the formula in quantity n minus 2 times 180. And now we know the sum, so that would be equivalent to 1080. And we're looking for n. So 1080 is equal to the quantity n minus 2 times 180. Divide each side by 180. Therefore, we get n equivalent to 8. And <clears throat> excuse me, the name of the polygon with eight sides is an octagon. How many sides does a polygon have if, if, if each of its interior angles is equivalent to 160? There's two different approaches that you can take um, finding this. Um, I prefer to actually find the exterior angle. So we know that the interior angle and the exterior angle are supplementary. So the exterior angle would be equivalent to 180 minus the 160. So we know that um, if each of its interior angles is 160, then each of its exterior angles is 20 because all the angles would therefore be congruent if each of the interior angles is 160. Therefore, all the exterior angles, each of them individually, would be 20. Well, we know that all of those angles add up to 360. So if we take the 360 degrees, and if we divide that by the degree measure of each angle, that would be equivalent to the number of sides. Therefore, we would get the number of sides to be 18. And again, we are looking for the number of sides and not the name of the polygon, so we have 18 sides. At this time, we are done with section 7.3 notes. However, for class, I would like you to do two things for tomorrow. First of all, we have covered section 7.1 in class already. I would like you to go back to 7.1 and write down the three formulas that we have already covered. And then two, I would like you to take a look at page 3.12 problem 21. Again, th page 312, problem 21. This talks about the formula for diagonals, and I would like you to explore that for class tomorrow. And again, this concludes section 7.3 notes.